Welcome to Dart and Flutter vocabulary series. Today we'll be talking about asynchronous programming with Dart. So there is one keyword or one word you might have heard uh, whenever you talk about asynchronous programming in Dart world is futures. So I have written this article about um, giving a little introduction about what it is and this is this article is a uh, one part of the three part series. So we'll be talking about in this video futures, in the next video streams, and then in the last video, uh, the types of streams. So let's start with futures. So futures are the, uh, actually they refer to the future objects that represent the result that is returned by the asynchronous operation. So what is an asynchronous operation? Uh, the operation which doesn't block the processing, uh, and they take the work and uh, let the thread goes, uh, the, whatever the, uh, the main thread go, so they don't block it. Whenever the work is done, it will return the uh, result back. So uh, it, this is being done like mostly for the expensive operations where you do not want to block the main thread doing that um, and doing the operations. So uh, in this, uh, so uh, the the way Dart uh, return these op uh, the long operations result is something called future object. So the future object is this the class. So actually this is the f uh, future, and this T is the type of the data that is returned uh, from the that operation, the long running operation. So a uh, Dart deals with like in a two ways uh, using either await and async keywords, and the other way to use um, uh, to use the operation, the async operation, uh, asynchronous operation is the future API. So first we will be uh, seeing, uh, carrying on the per executing the asynchronous operations using the await and async keywords. So first thing is we have to use the async uh, and await keywords together. So how it works is like this. So let's look at the code, this code snippet. So what it is, I am, I have some like a dummy code here say get expensive data and here it's just returning a string but it could be also replace a network operation perhaps or a access from the disk that you are loading a file and such so so this is what it's returning in here it's returning a string here and now my this make data call is actually executing that operation so this is what it's calling the expensive data operation that uh, expensive call and it's printing the data in this case so uh, that's uh, so the way we do it first thing this function is returning the future void because it's not really returning anything it's just printing the data here so in this case is we are running void if you want to return the string then you may want to replace this void with the string uh, data type so in here uh, you see the keyword await right here so whenever you use await, that's where the processing halts and uh, it goes to uh, execute the long operation. And when uh, it the operation result uh, return the result, that's where the next uh, the print data will be called. So that's the property of await, and it must go with the async um, keyword for the function level. So that's how the, the method signature looks like um, for the. Uh, for the await and async uh, combo together. So in this case, what happens here when you call this, so your call stops here, uh, suspends here, and when the data is written, it prints the data here. So now for the output for this code will be expensive data. So now to execute this code snippet, there are a couple of ways. One thing you can simply copy paste this whole code block into the Dart pad. That's the one way to do this. Um, and the another is here is the source code for the GitHub repo uh, in Android Studio. So I will open my Android Studio and will show you side by side how it's happening. Okay, so I'm here in my Android Studio and this is my file, it's futures.dart, which is um, here. So if you say, see it's GitHub in futures.dart and this is where I have all the example codes for this um, article so first is make data call this is for example one 
and what it's doing if you go simply you can uncomment this so right now i'm pretty much all the code this is a main entry point function and everything inside will be commented so you can uncomment one at a time to learn about that particular example so in here the example one make data call so as we just talked about this is calling the get expensive data and is printing it so you can it run it either by right clicking on it and run the file so it says my m expensive data or uh, you can so that's that's the one way i use it and some or you can add the configuration to run that particular file uh, okay so this is what so it's returning the uh, expensive data is just printing it so now let's see in the next uh, next example so next example is what if there is an error uh, how would we handle the exceptions so in this case i have added a uh, uh, the get expensive data with expansion uh, sorry exception so in this case i am throwing exception on purpose so this could happen if a network request hasn't returned uh, or has returned with error or a exception is being thrown while reading a file from a disk or such so in that in this case to simulate this case i am actually throwing my exception right here and i'm calling the uh, the await get expensive data with uh, expand uh, exception method right here and i'm wrapping it around in try and catch block as if i do with my other synchronous code so in here it will suspend here the operation once the data comes and if it finds there is a exception it will go here and will execute my catch block right here you can also add finally here as you do in the try catch finally to do something that you may want to do uh, regardless if you get exception or not so let's run this one so as you do it we un we comment it out the first one and we comment out the uncomment the second one and again i go i'm running my second code with exception so as you can see it says exception error occurred in fetching data so here i'm printed out the code uh, sorry output right here now the third thing about this uh, the third example is about sequencing function calls so what it is like for example you have couple of data calls here i have get data a b and c and i want them to uh, execute them in a particular order i want the get a execute first then b and then c so how would i do that so it, the await keyword actually gives us power to use it um, to write our code in very much like a synchronous way so it will happen like it gets suspend here first and then it get is executed so it will print data a then it will data b and then data will data c so let's see how so as you can see output is right here as well so let's run it here so sequencing order operation and let's comment the first one to keep it clean and let's run it so you can see data a data b and data c now uh, let's go to the future api so what is future api so in in future api we use something called then so once the uh, our result is returned you call that in a then um, block uh, at, to do something with the response that's returned so let's see uh, the same um, uh, example but rewriting it with using then so as you can see my um, so i have so here I'm using the future API and it's returning my uh, get expensive data. So again, I'm returning the expensive right here. And then I'm running my main with future API and this is returning me a future. Now on the future, I'm calling the then and the value uh, which is supposed to be returned from here, uh, like make data call future string, which is a string, will be written here and then I'm printing it so let's see let's see in the code right here what happens here so I'm going here commenting it and main with future API so right here I have make data call with future string which is I know is a future right here uh, I'm returning a future right here and now my the this code executes it returns a future so this is the value it returns string value and it prints it let's see what we get it so again i'm saying i'm expensive data so 
whenever the result is there uh, is available it will print it otherwise it won't uh, so that's how the future api works and now the future void so what if there is a void it's like when data there's no data return what happens then so in that case the thing uh, this uh, the then changes with a underscore so when uh, so underscore is not really used which represent like there's no oh, so then uses the underscore which is like an unused argument and you can uh, do any processing like the data which is not returning anything but you know it's completed so you can so i'm print just printing a print statement right here now the next example is about error handling how would you uh, do the error handling for the future api so right here uh, i'm throwing exception here like i'm getting a data and i'm throwing exception and uh, appending the data with it so in here the very same way i'm using then and I'm using catch error. So if an error is thrown, my control will go here. So let's execute this code. So I command this future API and I run the error code. So there you go. So it says error occurred in making data and my data is appended with this. And it printed the, uh, it, it, it printed my, uh, the, uh, the error. Okay, so it's right here. So it printed the catch error in the main with future API error. Now, the last one is the usage of future dot wait method. So this is again, like when we want to execute multiple asynchronous function and the one function and we want like uh, them to be executed in a order like we did in the await and for um, the async as we did before. So how would we do with the future API, that thing? So in if you if you're using future API, you may want to use the wait. So uh, the future dot wait. So be, uh, the data which is returned from get data a future is it will execute it first and then this will read second and then third. So that's how you can wait for one um, future to return its result before it executes the next one and so on. And then it it returns a list of responses. So here I'm printing the responses, the list of that, whatever is the future, the values returned in here. And if it, there is error, it will print here. So let's see in the action. This is the last example. Let's go here. And as you see, data A, data B, and data C, as we can see it here. So, so what we saw in this um, uh, tutorial about uh, how we can use the await and async when we want to execute this asynchronous operation but it but is that look like more like asynchronous operations but still they are asynchronous and how to use future api um, a to fetch and the process the data and also we saw like how to use the wait method so it, in case our order of the operation matters and we want one uh, operation to wait for another option to finish first so in the next lesson uh, in the next article we'll be talking about something called streams so as we saw in this future uh, once our whole result is finished like a data call is done then the whole um, result is returned but in streams there is a one by one result uh, uh, comes or get available as they as they become available they will be transmitted to the uh, transmitted through a stream to the consumer so it goes one by one so that is something called stream and we will cover that in the next article and the next video so i'll see you in the next video